if, if you shoot and it's not on YouTube, did it even happen? No, I'm did. not sure. It What's up, folks? <clears throat> so, um, this is going to be a short video just to try and address some of the misinformation I see out there. So much, like, so much informa misinformation on uh, what I would consider somewhat reputable uh, forums out there. Uh, but let me let me just go sort of briefly into what I see a lot. Okay, um, these, I'm in the middle of reviewing this TSOS gun. It's a cheap Turk gun. It's a production gun, and it ships with cheap magazines. This is not actually the magazine that comes with it. It's, uh, it is a, it, uh, let me just grab it. So it comes with these, like, cheap ACT magazines, okay? And, um, made by ACT, 45 ACP, right? And... What everybody says, as soon as someone has any kind of feeding issue at all, like never with these guns, the first thing you hear is go throw them away and buy you some Wilson Combat. Those are great magazines. And they are. These are fantastic magazines, okay? These are Wilson Combat mags. They will work, and they will probably cover up a lot of the feeding issues that you're having with your 1911. But I think this is more of like a patch. It's like a way to just buy your way out of some of the problems that you might be having. These magazines should theoretically work. Um, they're not a horrible design. They're a hybrid lip model, you know, feed design. I'm fully expecting to get my T-Sauce gun to run with these magazines. Now... Will they run the first 500 mag rounds with this, this these mags? I don't, I don't know. I, I'm trying to mitigate my expectations, but what I'm trying to do is review this gun, the T-Sauce, with the magazine that comes with it. And But but I just see a lot of people like, oh, throw those magazines away, they're trash. And, and they're not as good as Wilson Combat, but the main issue that they're not addressing that is the problem with 1911s and I got I got a I got a few of them I got 3 on the table I got one here I mean I, I like 1911s but the, the the issue with 1911s that most people or it gets buried in the comments mostly is what I see like the first top comments like throw away these cheap mags and go buy some Wilson Combat. But, but later down in there that I don't think gets enough attention is you need to check your extractor tension that is like 99% of your problem when it comes to feeding issues with the 1911 is extractor tension and no one, you know, so I wanted to make a quick video just to demonstrate exactly what I meant here. And, and, and a lot of you guys, this is going to be, especially if you're a 1911 guy, this is going to be total review, but I see a lot of noobs getting really bad info. And the, well, I'm trying to address that where like the first thing they get told is to go buy a $50 magazine. It's like, well, yeah, no shit, but that's kind of expensive for a $400 gun when you could actually just take the, the, the slide that you're given and, you know, bend on a piece of metal, the extractor and solve your problem and not have to, and maybe it'll run with these cheaper mags. Like I bought this as a black Friday sale is for 10 bucks and I'm hoping that it'll run. Um, I've got Wilson combats as sort of a backup, but it should run with the magazine, right? If, if the gun's set up properly, the magazine's less of an issue, although these are probably trash magazines. I get that, but don't just cover up the issue. You still need to take a look at your extractor attention. You still need to look at this and see and, and know what I'm talking about here. This is part of having a hand-fit metal gun. So what I've got on the table, this is my Colt slide that I've had. This runs like pretty much anything. It's my competition gun. I know the extractor is properly tensioned on this. It feeds. I don't have issues with it. Okay. This is this is a properly tuned extractor. That's why it's on here. What this is, is this is the T-Saw slide with the extractor in it that I'm reviewing. And I only have like 140 rounds on this one. This one has thousands and thousands of rounds, right? I, so that's that's the difference here. But what I'm really using here I want to show you the difference in what I, what I believe to be a properly tuned extractor and a, you know, we'll see where this one comes in. All right. So what you do, get your slide, take your barrel out, take everything out and leave your extractor in. And what you're going to do is get a live round or a snap cap, I guess, but I like using live rounds. It's not going to go and slide it underneath the extractor 
as if it was feeding from the magazine. And you can already start to feel how much tension is on this case, right? And you're going to try and get it to the back, right? And what it should do is it just should hold in there, okay? And this is what most production 1911s do well. They'll hold it in there. They'll hold it too well in there. Because what you want to be able to do is shake it, just a, and it's going to fall out, right? Okay, just a little bit like that, and it falls out. And, and we've been having feeding issues with this in the first 150 rounds or so. Straight off the magazine, like a full mag, and you hit the thumb, and it, you hit the slide slop, and it doesn't always feed 100%. Four slots, 230 gram ball. Well, that's not a good start. <laughs> Stand by. So what I suspect <clears throat> is happening is this extractor is a little tight. And I, I've, I've, I'll be, I could tell you, I've already measured this off, off camera, but I'm going to demonstrate it. And you can already tell when you're sticking this into the extractor already, it is much tighter than the one I just showed you. Okay. It's not going anywhere. Okay, it's close, all right? It's, it's, it's almost there. All right, it's close. It wants to let it go. And I would imagine if I shoot this another 300, 400 times, it's, it's probably gonna be dialed in. It's not there yet, all right? And I'm not even gonna go into a video on how to adjust your extractor, okay? There's lots of them. Go, go, go look at other videos on YouTube on how to adjust extractor tension. But what I'm telling you, what the point I'm trying to make here is that just because your gun doesn't feed doesn't necessarily mean it's the magazine. You can cover it up with a Band-Aid with Wilson Combats. Maybe, yes, and the problem will go away. But more than likely, you just need to adjust your extractor tension. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But it's a diagnose, di diagnosis tool that you need to know about if you shoot 1911s. Because your extractor, in my experience, is like 98% of all problems I've ever had with 1911s is that they have this internal extractor that needs to be hand fit, kind of hand adjusted, and it tends to want to loosen over time, or you put them in there too tight. It's just, it's just that's it. So if and if and if and that's why Sig tried to do the external one. You know, people have tried to solve this, but inherent to the design of a 1911, this metal non-sprung like extractor is, in my opinion, the major. This is the weakness of the design, just straight up. And you need to be aware of how to measure it and how to look for a problem with it so that you can determine whether or not it is just mags, which they probably are crap mags, or whether, you know, or whether you're just covering it up. But I think I'm rambling here. I think I've made my point just because, uh, and the other thing is sometimes, you know, they talk about the break-in period. Well, the break-in period for 1911s is about 500 rounds. Well, you shoot not 500 rounds through your gun, what's gonna happen? Your extractor's gonna kinda loosen up, right? <laughs> I mean, we're not, Yes, there are metal on metal surfaces that are mating up with each other that are also wearing in, but you're also shooting your extractor, which is probably too tight from the factory. You're shooting it and working it and working and loosening it up to where it's probably where it should be. So if you want your gun to run sooner than spend what, you know, $500 is $250 in ammunition these days and, and maybe more expensive than that, 
If you want it to run sooner than that out of the box, you can also adjust the tension on your extractor and maybe save yourself some money on your mags and maybe you can run the cheap mags. You just need to be aware of it. You need to be um, informed on the 1911 extractor because that's what I see a lot of people getting bad information on. All right, that's my rant. That's my ramble. We're at 10 minutes. I'm going to call it right there. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe. I just, I, I see bad info out there. I got to try and address it. Tell me if I'm way, way, way off base and uh, tell me I'm crazy. Thanks, guys. Bye.